welcome to the informational webinar about commencement ceremony. So whether you have finished in the fall or you are going to finish the spring or summer, we stand with you in excitement for the big day on May 20th in Malibu. So this is where you are going to be. This is where all the excitement is going to take place. Here is our agenda for today. We're gonna to go over a few logistics and the RSVP process. We'll talk about regalia and the options that you have. We'll also hear from a colleague who will be talking about your check-in and action. We'll hear from alumni relations. We'll hear from student services that will talk about diploma and transcripts. We'll hear from two of our alumni to give you some personal insight on the commencement ceremony and a couple tips from them. Then we'll have a time for Q&A and then everyone's favorite, an opportunity to receive a raffle prize. So today's prize is the GSEP recognition stole that can be worn with regalia on commencement day and fall. So to be clear, Commencement for this year is Saturday, May the 20th, 2023 on our Malibu campus. We host two ceremonies within that one day. So at 10 a.m. will be our education division ceremony and at 2.30 p.m. will be our psychology division ceremony. And please note the grad arrival times. This time is necessary for all grads to be in their caps and gowns. We'll go through a little information session beforehand so that we can get everybody in the right place and then we'll march into the ceremony site. Um, I also want to remind you if um, you do have guests that are joining you that they are welcome to come at your arrival time uh, but we do recommend that guests are there at least a half hour before the commencement ceremony uh, to find a seat and just to note that are only two hours in length. And next, so this is the Malibu campus, and this is where our ceremony will be taking place out on the beautiful Alumni Park lawn. Uh, this is where you are going to check in, and this is also where you're going to uh, invite your guests to meet you. So parking on the campus is free. We do have parking along the roads that you see on this map, as well as a few parking structures. There will be some shuttles that are running throughout the campus that will take guests from the ceremony site to the parking lot and vice versa. If you or a guest has a California disabled parking placard, you are eligible to park in the Firestone Fieldhouse parking lot. So this is the closest parking lot to the ceremony site. Um, so all guests just need to show that placard in order to gain access into that parking lot. We do have some golf carts that run from the ceremony site to the parking lot back and forth if guests need some assistance from that parking structure. Some items to note that I feel um, are important for you to know, guest tickets. So this year, each guest over the age of two are required to hold a guest ticket. Uh, each graduate will be receiving eight guest tickets. The graduates themselves do not need to hold a guest ticket. These are only for those not marching in the ceremony. You will receive a RSVP email. And with that email will be a link on how you can obtain your guest tickets. We'll have two rounds of guest ticketing um, election. So with that, if all of the tickets are not um, taken up by the grads in the first round, those will be put back into the pool so grads will have a chance to obtain more tickets. So there is a possibility that you may be able to get at least eight, um, but eight tickets are um, definitely available for each grad to start. For our guests, it is open seating on a first come first seated basis. It is out in the open in Alumni Park. So we do not have uh, the, a covered area for all guests. There is one sun sensitive tent. It's in the back of guest seating. And that is also on a first come first seated basis. We do have restrooms out on Alumni Park. Um, they are pretty much the nicest 
porta potty restrooms you've ever seen. Uh, and then there is a wheelchair and scooter section for our uh, guests. And you can see that in the front, uh, on the front right. So if you do have a guest that is attending in a wheelchair or a scooter, you can direct them to go sit uh, in that section. Flowers, bookstore, and a coffee cart are all um, going to be vendors that are on Alumni Park that day. So you can inform your guests if they would like to purchase flowers for you. Um, you'll see in this picture, there are Hawaiian Lays. That's a tradition with Pepperdine. So those will be sold uh, at the campus. Um, we'll also have a tent that is run by our bookstore. So they offer hats and sweatshirts, diploma covers, et cetera. Um, and then for those guests that need a snack during commencement, there is a coffee cart. Uh, the university does have a photographer contract. So there will be a photographer that are taking pictures of you as you walk across the stage and a posed photo of you as you come off the stage. And so those proofs will be emailed to each grad and you'll have an opportunity to purchase those if you would like. The national anthem at each ceremony is traditionally sung by a graduate. So if you have vocal ability that you would like to share, we will have tryouts on April 18th, 19th, and 20th in West LA and also offered via Zoom. So you'll receive an email in early April if you would like to participate in that audition process. Now to regalia. So each graduate is responsible for obtaining their academic regalia to wear at the ceremony. There are two versions of the regalia for GSEP, the doctoral level and the master's level. The doctoral rental includes what you see here, the mortarboard cap, which is the same cap that you've been wearing since high school graduation. If you're at the doctoral level and you're interested in wearing a TAM, which is the beret looking uh, hat at the bottom of this photo, uh, you would have to purchase that. You can do that through Herf Jones, which is the preferred vendor of Pepperdine. Um, there are other vendors outside of Herf Jones that sell doctoral TAMs, so you're welcome to um, look elsewhere. I just want you to be aware that the Pepperdine custom blue gown is what we use. So you would be looking for a royal blue tan. For master students, you will rent or purchase the cap, the gown, the tassel, and the hood. And something that is optional, but we want to make you aware of it, is this achievement stole. So it has GSEP lettering down one side and the Pepperdine seal on the other side. So all of this information is on our graduation webpage, which we'll drop in the chat, but it is gscp.pepperdine.edu slash graduation. There's a tab about renting regalia and purchasing regalia. There's also videos on that page to take you through the ordering process on the Herf Jones rental site. Again, here's a photo of those videos, but if you um, go to the Herf Jones ordering site, you will either select student rental gown or purchasing academic regalia. Um, please note if you are looking for the academic stole that is only offered in the student rental gown section, even though it is something that you're purchasing and you do get to keep. Uh, there's also opportunity to purchase announcements, rings, and diploma frames. And when you click on the videos that are associated with this, it takes you through the option for selecting the hood color. There are different colors depending upon the uh, discipline. So there's a separate color for ed doctoral, psych doctoral, master's ed and master's psychology. So please do view those videos to make sure that you're ordering the hood lining that is connected to the degree you're receiving. So this is just a slide to help keep it all straight. So if you are receiving a master's of education, your hood lining will be light blue. If you're receiving a EDD in education, you are also going to select light blue as the color. And if you are receiving a PhD in education, you will select dark blue. And on the psychology side, master students, whether you're receiving it on ground or online, you will be selecting the white 
hood that's associated with arts, letters, and humanities. So you're not looking for psychology as the degree name, you're looking for the lining color white, which is associated on the Herc Jones site with arts, letters, and humanities. And if you are a PsyD graduate, then you would select dark blue. I am now going to toss it over to Massa, who is going to talk about our grad check-in process. Massa, go ahead. Thank you, Vanessa. So as we talked about earlier, um, this is where the magic happens. Um, you will notice that once you enter um, into the alumni park, you'll notice that the grad check-in is near these um, little lakes on the side. So you will come down here and check in. We have a large table um, at the check-in table where you will um, come and find your um, appropriate program. It is imperative to know whether your education and psychology, um, first off, uh, which school your degree is housed in and what is the correct degree name. Um, you will see signage for each degree name and we welcome you to line up um, at each, um, where each program is listed at. When you uh, check in, you will receive a check-in card like this. And this card, you will write your name um, and you have an option to write your phonetic spelling. Um, once you do that, you can go in and get, um, we'll have a section where you can fix your hood and your hats. And um, you'll after you receive the name card, you are going to be sectioned up to what we call the mock. And the mock is where um, you will be sitting before we go into processional. A lot of students ask about honors and honors are not printed in the commencement program um, and they are not read individually during the commencement ceremony. Um, and also there is no storage space. So we ask all our graduates to come lightly, just bring your regalia with you and no personal items, leave that in your car or leave it with um, members of your family or guests. There is no strict assigned seating at the mock. You'll see little stanchions that have your program listed. You will go over there and just, you're welcome to sit anywhere you want. The only exception is that if you are a doctoral student in the education or in the psychology division, you will receive a number when you check in with your check-in card and you will have an assigned seating and this is for hooding purposes. Thank you, Massa. I now invite Dr. Renee Dorn, Director of Alumni Relations, to share with us a bit about opportunities for our graduates now that they are alumni. Yes, thank you so much, Vanessa. Uh, when it comes to uh, the commencement ceremony, as you can see on the screen, after the ceremony, um, after you have finished taking your pictures, after you've turned in your regalia, make sure you come to the alumni tent because for all of the graduates, we will have for you uh, a graduation bag um, that has different information in there for you regarding alumni relations, regarding um, the university alumni affairs office, as well as uh, two or three gifts for you. So we ask that each graduate come by our table to pick up their graduation bag. But as, we, as I say this, we wanna make sure that you are the person who graduated that picks up that bag. We have a list that we check people off. So we ask that not your family members come to the table to pick it up for you, but you come to the table to pick up your own bag. Um, we appreciate that. Um, we also have some informational links, as you can see. Um, the first one has to do with the technology checklist for the graduates. Um, this gives you a listing of all the different things you need to know regarding technology as a grad. One of the things is that 90 days after this commencement ceremony, you will not be able to have access to your student emails. So in that case, before those 90 days are up, you have the opportunity to get your own alumni email. And that is also one of the links on the screen for an alumni email. 
Um, when you do that, that will be your Pepperdine alumni email so that you can receive information from our alumni relations office or any other office within Pepperdine. Um, one thing we always want you to do is make sure that you update your information. So make sure that you, one of the, the second link you may see, account changes when transitioning from student to alumni status. That also gives you the opportunity to up may, update your contact information, just to make sure that we'll be able to connect with you um, after commencement. Uh, one other thing is that as an alum, you will still have access to library services, but they will be limited. So make sure that you contact our alumni relations office so that if you are very much interested in continuing to do research, whether you are in education or psychology, um, make sure you contact our office so that we can um, make sure to give you the alumni access information for the library. And I think, I think that is everything for uh, alumni relations. So thank you so much, uh, Vanessa, for allowing alumni relations to talk to our soon to be grants. Absolutely. And Sophia, who is also a member of the alumni relations team, did you want to add about access to library uh, once your student status has ended and you have become an alum? Yes. Hi, everyone. My name is Sophia. I also work with GSCP Alumni Relations. Um, so for library services, I did put the link in the chat. You do have access to um, a lot of online resources for research, um, but they are different from the access that you had as a student. Um, so after the presentation, I'll make sure to put all the all the passwords that you will need to access those resources. Um, and I'll also put it in the chat so you'll have access to all of that. Um, but yeah, that's it for library services. If you have any questions for us regarding alumni relations, just know that we're always here to support you. So thank you. And now I'd like to invite Michelle Bloss, Director of Student Success, to share a bit about what happens after you finish your program requirements. Thank you, Vanessa. It's it's really wonderful to see so many people attend this event. I'm really excited. This is my favorite event, and the events team um, really do a really good job to um, just create such a meaningful experience for our graduates. And I do want to just shout out and say that our, there's so many of the staff and faculty there supporting you on this day. So it's it really is a wonderful event, two events that we hold. Um, just so you know, when you actually walk across the stage, you are not handed your specific diploma. Uh, that will be mailed to you. So just know that when you submitted your graduation application or you will be submitting that application, um, make sure that you put the correct address because that information is entered in our system. And the registrar's office, once your degree is posted, will be mailed to you. Um, typically around 120 days after your degree posting. Um, and so I just wanted to uh, let you know that time period, they'll get those printed and mailed out to you. Um, following that, some of you need immediate transcripts. So be sure to um, order that transcript after your degree has posted. Sometimes we have students who will order a little bit too quick and the registrar's office is still uh, posting your degree. So maybe uh, wait about a week or so before you request that official transcript to make sure it has that official uh, degree completion noted on that. But the links are there on the slide uh, for your transcripts. And um, if you have any questions about diplomas or transcripts, you can also connect with your academic advisor who can also direct you if you seem to get lost in terms of where information is. Uh, but it's pretty easy process and we'll um, get those out to you as soon as possible once they're printed. Thank you, Michelle. I am now excited to introduce Kathleen Scott. She is an alumna of our MS in Organizational Leadership Program. She's going to share a bit of her insight as a graduate going through the commencement ceremony. And she will be going through this commencement ceremony yet again pretty soon as she is a current PhD student. So Kathleen, if you will share with us, um, maybe you can start with, uh, did you always plan on attending 
the commencement ceremony as you were going through your master's program. Yes, of course. Well, thank you for having me. And I'm happy to see everyone here. Um, it's a really exciting kind of point in your kind of journey so far. It's a lot of work that went into this. So congratulations, first of all, for making it to this point. Um, and yes, I always planned on attending the ceremony. I think um, I, I really love education. I really love just kind of the graduation as that perfect little bow on such a, a, a you know, laborious journey. Um, and I think it's just it's kind of the perfect thing to kind of close a chapter um, and and feel like, okay, I made it through it. You get to see your cohort, you get to see your professors, you get to see all the staff um, and everyone that kind of, you know, it was a labor of love to get here, I'm sure. Um, so to have your family there and, and everyone around you, it's kind of really nice to just kind of have that final moment of, yes, I did this and everyone is here that kind of helped me to get to this point. So I always recommend <laughs> doing the ceremonies for sure. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. And regalia is something that is often new to a lot of graduates at the master's level as far as being responsible for it. So at your master's level commencement, did you rent or purchase your academic regalia? I did rent. Um, I knew I was going to do the PhD program at some point. I knew that was going to be an expensive one. So I was like, for this one, I also had a similar color for what I did like undergrad and my associates. So I was like, okay, I think I can rent this one. But I did it very, very early. I think I ordered it in like early February because it said, you know, the processing times, um, you know, it depended. Um, it could be a lot longer. So I was like, I want to get my pictures in and be safe. So the earlier, the better. So you don't have that kind of over your head as a worry point. Fantastic. Great advice. Do you have um, any thoughts on something that you may have done differently now that you've walked through it or something that you definitely would repeat if you were going through the process again as a master's student? Yeah, um, there is there is a few things. I think one, um, <laughs> sunscreen is a must. I know that wasn't really talked about before then. And it was funny because the day of my graduation, it was very cloudy and gloomy. Um, and we were all like, oh, it's like windy and cold. That's that has got to be like, you know, not a biggie for the sun, but my godfather got a terrible sunburn. So I highly recommend some sunscreen. Um, I think we're as graduates kind of covered, but you know, it's always good to err on the safe side. Um, and then, uh, group shots. Um, you have a lot of time kind of before the ceremony gets to, you, you get to that seating arrangement. Um, and that is kind of the prime time. And we'll see the only time you have to get pictures if you want some with your fellow classmates, students, um, or a picture with your cohort. Definitely do that like beforehand, because after you get to seating and the ceremony starts and the ceremony ends, everyone's family just comes and grabs them and kind of um, everyone disappears really quickly. So definitely get those pictures. I wish I had um, taken a little bit more photos. I love the more photos, the better. Um, and I think I would definitely kind of do that a little differently. So I made sure I got everything in there. Um, and then lastly, anything else I would do differently, you know, just really just take it all in, you know, just kind of give yourself that breather. Um, and, you know, you're going to need these memories. <laughs> That's what I always say. Like, it's, you know, take in as much as you can. This is, you know, your, your day, everyone's there for you. Um, also, I think they mentioned the coffee cart. One kind of little tip that is, is funny is they had apparently really great donuts and my family was like, they have these amazing, they were texting me during the ceremony, like, these donuts are amazing. And then I got there afterwards and I was like, so where's the donut? And they're like, oh, we ate yours. So if I crash your graduation, I may be there. I will be having a donut and I suggest that you do too. <laughs> so that's my few tips. Excellent tip. Thank you so much, Kathleen. We also have a, another master's student or alumni from our psychology division, Arturo Morales, received um, his MA in teaching, but he is now in our clinical psychology program and uh, finished that in 2022. So Arturo, I'd like to invite you to unmute yourself. And uh, I'm gonna go through some of the same questions, um, but first of all, welcome. And thank you so much for being with us today. Hi, everybody. Well, thank you for having me. Can everybody hear me fine? Yes. Okay. Um, so yeah, I, I always planned to attend the commencement ceremony. As you said, I finished my MA in teaching December, 2019, and uh, we were supposed to walk May, 2020. And of course, that didn't happen. So I didn't get a chance to walk the first time when I finished that program. 
Um, and so as a result of that, I, as a result of COVID and being a new teacher, I went into the MA in clinical psychology that I completed um, last year. So I did, I always planned it. I always planned to, um, to attend the, the ceremony. Uh, it's just something to me that I wanted to share with my family because, well, as you know, all of you know, everything that we go through to get these uh, these things done, to get our uh, program completed. And for people like me and, and many probably of you that are in your second or third career, a lot of times you have to put the whole family on hold and without their support, it's it's it just makes it a lot more tougher to complete. So I wanted to share this moment with with them, and I always um, I always planned on attending. As far as my uh, my regalia, um, I rented mine, and I'm glad I did. I have my undergrad one still that I purchased, and it's just sitting there. I I plan on going to a doctoral program, and I don't know if it's going to be at um, UCSD. Hopefully, I get in or or uh, SDSU, and I know that I'll have purchase one at that time or get another one. So I just rented mine because I knew that once the ceremony was over, I wasn't gonna use it again. So, uh, and it's not that cheap either. So um, I, I rented mine. One of the things I will say though, is that they were great. Um, they were very gracious. Uh, for some reason, I slipped my mind. I was teaching, I still teach and I still do uh, psychotherapy. So I kind of balanced both. So I kind of waited to the last minute to rent mine, but they were um, so helpful and and, um, I was able to get mine on time uh, a couple of days early. As far as that goes, though, I I would recommend that, especially the females, to try your hood on because depending on what you wear, I think when you pin the hood on, it, it, some of my uh, classmates, female classmates, they had a tough time uh, pinning it or buttoning it because the, of what they wore. So it was coming up to their neck. So just kind of try it out and make sure that you you know, whatever you're going to wear fits and you're able to hold it and, and button it in place and so on. Um, so what I did the day of the commencement, I, I rented a hotel near Malibu. I wasn't able to get one nearby. And so I was there early. I was able to park easily and stuff. My family got there a little bit later, but all the, all the staff and the people that are directing traffic, I didn't hear any problems with parking. Uh, it's a lot of people, but um, I, we also didn't have tickets, so this is something new. I don't remember any tickets last year, so I think it was whoever you wanted to invite. I think I had like 20 people. Um, maybe that's why we have tickets. I don't know. But um, as far as parking, everything was great. Um, everybody, the, the, the staff was directing traffic, so everybody had parking with no problem. Um, so I think one of the things I would kind of recommend is the same thing that um, I think Kathleen yeah, uh, Kathleen mentioned is wear sunblock. And for the family members that come or the people that go support you, if they wear a hat, even though it may be cloudy, like she said, that sun will come through and it, it's it's kind of a long ceremony. So if for sure sunblock and if they can wear a hat of some sort so that they can block the sun because it will be kind of in your face. Um, it can be very hot. It's going to be about the same time. Um, you do get the breeze from the ocean, which is nice but it will get hot. So if you can wear a hat, your family can wear a hat, have them wear a hat, get some black on, and then um, plan ahead to be there for a while. Um, you do, when you do get there early, you are gonna have a lot of time to hang out with people from your cohort, take pictures and just hang out and enjoy the moment. Um, and that's one of the best memories that I did have um, from the ceremony is just that, that opportunity to, be with the people that you've been in class with and school with and share that, take it all in, take pictures, be goofy, whatever it is that you're going to do and um, enjoy that time with them, you know, and then also whatever your plans are after plan ahead, because I think it took me over two hours to get to, to the restaurant that we were going. And had I known, I would have just planned something different. So just be mindful of what it is that you plan to, on doing after the ceremony, after the commencement ceremony, so that you figure out a way to just make it as painless as possible traffic in LA. And I'm from North County, San Diego, so I'm not used to that LA traffic that much. Uh, I had to move up there for the program and all that, but um, it was pretty brutal. So just plan ahead a little bit when it comes to what you're gonna end up doing afterwards. Um, and then of course, another great memory that I had was sharing that moment with, with family members. Um, Take it all in, like it's been said before. Just take it all in, enjoy your moment, enjoy the time, enjoy the day, and 
share some of those memories with the family that's going to go see you or your friends and, and that's going to go see you. Um, so again, just be there early, <laughs> be there early, get some sunblock and, and be comfortable as best as you can. Um, yeah, I don't know if there's any questions that I may have left out, but uh, yeah, just enjoy the moment, enjoy the day. Fantastic. Thank you, Arturo. And thank you, Kathleen, for your insight. Um, things that came to mind while you were speaking, I just want to reiterate that PCH is a often two ties, but sometimes it's just a four lane highway. So it does take quite a long time. So if you are in the second ceremony, uh, plan, plan a buffer because things happen on PCH um, that don't happen on any other road. And it always seems to happen on commencement day. So we don't want you to miss something that you've worked so hard for. Uh, so please be aware of that. And like Arturo mentioned, uh, leaving the campus, you are now back on PCH. So it does take a while to exit the campus and then to go on PCH either north or south. So please be mindful of that. And also after the ceremony, we do have an informal reception on Alumni Park. This is where you can meet up with your family, take a picture with one of the most beautiful backgrounds in all the world with the Pacific Ocean. Um, our faculty members do mingle around in that area. So you may um, want to talk to them about uh, planning to meet up to take pictures or introduce them to your families, but know that that's available to you. We do have some refreshments, so it's lemonade and some of the best cookies you've ever had. Um, and that will be dispersed at several tables around Alumni Park. So that is available to you all. But um, thank you again, Kathleen and Arturo for, for being with us and uh, for showing what it is to be an alum of GSEP. Uh, we thank you for just your partnership in continuing to be with us and investing in future waves. So next, I just wanna highlight our grad webpage. So this URL is going to be your best resource in getting all information that is necessary. Most of what we cover today is housed on this website. So if you have a question after you walk away from this webinar, please do read this webpage because it most likely will have that answer. So that's gsep.pepperdine edu slash graduation. There's links to the Herf Jones website for either purchasing or ordering regalia, announcements, timetables, deadlines, guest tickets, when emails will be coming to you so that you can RSVP, so you can collect those tickets. So that's all housed again on this web page. And if you have a, a question that is not towards your academic advisor, so it's not about your coursework or requirements, but it is about the ceremony, then you can email gsepgrad at pepperdine.edu and staff will get back to you about your, your needs. If you are a student who um, has special needs that will um, require something visually, something uh, physically, you can email gsepgrad at pepperdine.edu. Uh, we can, will then uh, work to connect with the ADA office um, and make sure that all your needs and requirements are met for you to fully engage in your commencement ceremony. Now I'm going to open up a time for Q&A. Vanessa, there's been yeah. a couple of questions regarding the parking and then also um, the differentiation between the ADA and regular parking. Certainly. So on the Malibu campus, we have multiple parking lots that will be open for the commencement ceremony, with the exception of the Firestone Fieldhouse lot. So this is the parking lot that is the closest to the commencement ceremony site. That is reserved for those with the California placard um, disabled parking. Um, and also those from any other state. So it doesn't have to be California. Um, so if you do have that, that is issued by your state government, then you have access uh, with our public safety officers to park into that parking lot. Uh, for those that also have guests that have those parking placards, they can also park there. Another option is for that guest to be dropped off at the entrance to Alumni Park so that there's less distance for them to have to travel. And then whomever is driving the car can go ahead and park it in the Firestone Fieldhouse lot. For those that don't have the placard, any of our parking 
lots will be open and we have campus shuttles that are running. Um, we add more for commencement day. So there are shuttle stops at each of the parking lots. So you can wait for a shuttle that will drop you off at the entrance to Alumni Park. Um, or you can park along the streets and walk. Um, for those that you have not been on our Malibu campus, it's quite hilly. So uh, be prepared for that walk. Give yourself time. Uh, walk slowly, be safe. Uh, we don't want any injuries before a commencement ceremony or any other time. Uh, but again, links to the map of the campus are on our GSEP grad webpage. Hi, um, yes, I have a question regarding our diplomas. Um, I have yet to receive my diploma and I don't have any holds on my account. I graduated in December and I was wondering if that's normal, if anyone else hasn't received their diploma, um, if I'm the only one who hasn't received their diploma. Uh, yeah, sure. I, yeah, I can, Michelle, I can go right ahead. Yeah, I can respond to that. If your degree posted in fall, um, that would be at the end of December. So the arrival of the diplomas won't be happening until the uh, end of March, beginning of April, that you have to give us 120 days to those arrive. So all of our fall graduates have not received those just yet. Okay, perfect. Just wanted to make sure I wasn't the only one. <laughs> You're not. Thank you so much for asking, Megan. Yeah, so you guys um, mentioned for the the hood um, that it was like the hood lining colors for Masters of Psychology was white. Um, so I have my hood here and it's blue and orange. This was the one sent to me, but so is this the right one? That is correct. So if you, okay. um, the blue and the orange represent Pepperdine and that's the inner lining. So anyone who graduates from Pepperdine, regardless of discipline, will have those colors. And then if you flip to the outside, the velvet portion where yours is white, that is the color that needs to indicate your discipline. So if you are a master's psychology, white is the color. So yes, as long as you're an MA uh, psychology, you have the correct hood in your hand. And then like clinical psychology, that doesn't mean like- There's difference. no difference, correct. Okay. And then at like once you get to uh, Pepperdine on graduation they'll show you like how to wear it correctly absolutely yes okay. so there are links on our web page if you want to put that on to take pre-commencement photos so that you have that on properly um, but yes we will have staff there to make sure that everything is where it should be and how it should be before you march into the ceremony perfect thank you so much absolutely and I did see a few questions about the um, honor cords and the stole. So the um, this stole is something that you purchase and you keep. The only way to get to it is through the rental pathway. So that is not the clearest. Uh, we've talked with Hurt Jones to try and make that um, a better pathway, but that is something that you purchase and you do get to keep. If you rent a cap, gown, and hood, you do get, get to keep the cap and the tassel. So only the hood and the gown need to be returned to the cap and gown return tent at the commencement ceremony once you're done with the ceremony and taking pictures with your friends. So I have a question regarding the um, rental. Can I go to like West LA campus and like go and like try it on and like um, rent it there or... Sure. So our bookstore does not have access to take orders, nor do they physically have any gowns with them. Um, on our gsep.pepperdine.edu slash graduation uh, webpage, there is a link to Herf Jones, and there's also a Herf Jones representative email. So you can email her. There may be an opportunity to figure out a way to try something on, or she may be able to give you more insight. Um, to make sure that things are fitting appropriately, especially if you want to purchase. Um, if you no. want to rent, uh, it's it's a lot easier. Um, kind of the the bandwidth of the sizes of the gowns are more small, medium, or large. Where if you're paying to rent, then it is more specific to neck size, shoulder width, etc. Okay, so so I just go on the website and then uh, you know try to see how I can try it on if I can for the rental. And then once you, did you say that once we're done, we have to return it that day? Like, yeah, there's okay. a cap and gown return tent afterwards, after you're done with pictures. Um, if you rent it now, it'll be sent to you uh, within a couple of weeks. So you'll have it between 
you know, end of beginning of March through May. So that'll give you opportunity to have it to take pre-commencement photos, but it is a requested that is returned that day with the exception of the cap and the tassel that you get to keep. Oh, so the cap and tassel we buy through that same link and that same? It's part yeah. of the rental. So you rent everything, you return only the hood and the gown, but you get to keep the cap and the tassel. It's just the way that Herf Jones has has cool. set up rental orders. Cool. And then, um, okay, I think that's my question. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Hi, um, I just had a question about the tickets. Um, I might have missed the part. Um, when does the email go out um, to RSVP for the eight tickets? Or how sure. many you want? Okay. So in mid-March, all of our graduates who um, have been identified as eligible to march in the ceremony. So that's going to be anyone who's finished the program in the fall, those who are finished in spring, um, you will get that email. Uh, I know that Student Services is working on those um, winter for those summer grads. Um, so those names will be given to the commencement office um, as they are approved. But mid-March is when you will get the RSVP link to let us know that you are attending the ceremony. And then shortly thereafter, the website will open to secure tickets. So in that RSVP email, will be the directions on when and where to go to collect your guest tickets. Excellent, thank you so much. Absolutely, congratulations, Sabrina. You. Laura, you're next. Hi, yes, can you hear me? Yes, go right ahead. Okay, yeah, my question is right along the lines of regarding the tickets. You said that um, once the tickets have been, like the ones that are not used, they'll be, go back in the pool and then there'll be another email. Um, is, are those tickets going to be based on first come first serve? So like if it opens, whoever jumps first online and reserves them, they're the ones that get them, or is it going to be like fairly distributed? Is everyone's going to, is everyone going to be considered? Sure. It is on a first come first serve basis, but there is a limit. So the first person who logs on cannot just grab eight tickets. So it will be um, limited uh, in the second round. Um, and when we have done, we didn't do tickets last year because we were rolling out of COVID and we combined several ceremonies together. Um, but before that we did do tickets and we were able to have uh, three rounds of tickets. So we did not hear from any student that they did not get the amount of tickets that they needed for their guests. So we're fairly confident that it won't be a, a mad rush and you'll be left with no tickets for your guests. Okay, um, thank you for, for that information. And I guess just because I'm thinking worst case scenario, because I have family flying in from Texas, um, let's say worst case scenario, I don't get enough tickets. Is it the assumption that if my family were to go to the ceremony, the ceremony they will not be let in? They most likely will not be let in, but before we even get to that point, then I would encourage you and anyone else that's in that situation to email gscpgrad at okay. edu and let's have communication around it before it's just this blanket no and don't show up to Malibu. Okay, and then my last question, and I know someone else had this question, is regarding the seating. Is there going to be seating available if everyone has like eight tickets and everyone's eight people come in? Will there be seating, um, or should we let our family know that there's a, a, they would probably end up standing throughout the whole ceremony if we don't get there on time, or sure. they don't get there, there on time? There will be ample seating, so no one will be left uh, without a okay. seat. It just is on a first come first serve basis as far as how close you are to the stage, et cetera. Okay, thank you so much. Absolutely, Laura. All right, Jacob, you're our last question before the raffle. What's up, can you hear me? Yes, go right ahead. Okay, for sure. Um, well, hi, um, I, I heard a couple times this thing called um, boards for like to wear and stuff. Um, what is that? Is that just to like look cool? like? Like I keep, I keep hearing like ordering and stuff. Like, like I already have like my, um, like my, hood, like my cap and gown and stuff. I got it early. Cause like, I was super excited, but then like, I keep hearing about this cord stuff. So like, I'm not too sure. Is that just like to look cool or like, like, what is that? 
Great question. And props to you for getting your regalia early. So you win the prize there. Um, cords uh, date back to honor cords that were given out um, if people received uh, high marks in their degree. Um, it has since transitioned sometimes into representing groups or cultures or clubs. Um, so I do know if you're in the psychology department, there is a Psychi National Honor Society. The information for that is on our GSCP graduation webpage. You can purchase that honor cord. Um, it's not necessarily an honor. Well, it is an honor cord. You can purchase that honor cord through their website. I don't think you have to show proof of, of um, uh, membership of Psychi uh, to order that. I know on the education side, there has been a, a National Honor Society that has, I think, uh, waned its way out from GSEP. But if you have um, any honors that you've received previously in a bachelor's or another master's, um, you're welcome to wear those. And I know that some cohorts also create their own cords or stoles to wear. So. Um, there is representation in what it means, um, it is not something that is necessary, and it has changed in uh, what it means, uh, so it's not necessarily always honors, it could be uh, membership into some group, um, so we do allow people to wear those, it's nothing that is mandatory, and there are plenty of students that are marching in the ceremony that are wearing their cap, their gown, and their hood only um, so, Jacob, if you don't have a cord, you're not excluded, um, but if you do want it to wear something that you've already received or you wanted to purchase one of those cords, you may definitely wear that in the ceremony. Dope. Thanks. Yeah, that was all. Thanks. I appreciate it. Go ahead. Last question. Yes. So, a lot of um, students want to know if... Um, how do they know if they rented a package online? Because on the website, it only had a package um, deal. So um, yeah, students were wondering about that. How do they know if they rented or, or bought the graduation package? Sure. It depends on which way you entered into the Herf Jones website. So I'm going to share our PowerPoint again. So this is the Herf Jones webpage. So when you log on from our website, you are going to be able to click either this top red circle that says student rental gowns or this bottom red circle that says purchase acad academic regalia. So dependent upon which order now button you press, then it will either send you into purchasing or it will send you into their website for renting. So um, I'm unable to tell you which way you went, but those are the two way, uh, ways about claiming regalia. Um, if you remember that you selected the hood color from a drop down menu, that is only offered if you are purchasing. So if you remember going through the process and you just keyed in that you were GSCP, and that you were education division master's level, that is the pathway to renting a gown. So I hope that's helpful. And yes, you do get to keep the cap and the tassel if you rented the gown. And obviously if you purchased it, then you get to keep everything and wear it all the time. And Side note, we have a faculty member who has a very bright red doctoral gown and he wears that to Starbucks and they give him free coffee. So if you purchase one, please try wearing it to Starbucks. You never know what might, what might happen. Congratulations to all of you for reaching this milestone. We are so very proud of you and we are here to assist you in reaching commencement day, knowing what you need to know, being prepared, um, again, if you have any questions, you can email gscpgrad at pepperdine.edu. Um, we encourage you to go to the website, gscp.pepperdine.edu slash graduation um, to get some information. And then if you have anything question-wise academic in nature, please do reach out to your academic advisor uh, to get that going. But 
make sure that you're reading your emails uh, so that you are getting the RSVP link from us to let us know that you want to attend. I, side note, if you are a grad from fall, we are sending that RSVP link to the Pepperdine, I'm sorry, to the personal email address that is listed in WaveNet. Um, so do uh, look for that there. If you still have access to Pepperdine, uh, we're choosing to send it to personal because we do not know when you're going to lose access to your Pepperdine. So we wanna make sure that you have that. If you are concerned that we don't have your personal email address, you can go ahead and email gscpgrad at pepperdine.edu with that preferred personal email address to make sure that information is going your way. I'm gonna stay on here a couple minutes longer if you have a question. Otherwise, thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your week and we will see you on Saturday, May 20th in Malibu. Yes, um, I also said this in the chat earlier. I was just wondering about um, pictures. I don't know, if, I think I might have missed that part. Um, there's a photographer that's gonna be there? There is. So Pepperdine has contracted with um, a outside vendor. So they take a picture of you as you walk across the stage. They also take a posed picture of you after you come down from the stage. So you're in your regalia, you're holding your diploma cover, and then those proofs are emailed to you, um, to whichever email address you got the RSVP link to. So you'll be able to purchase those pictures uh, from the vendor. And it's usually within 24 hours of the ceremony, they send out the proof. Hi, um, I just had a quick question. Both my parents are um, ADA. They have mm -hmm. um, trouble walking. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to know, um, well, there's, there's going to be ADA parking, but as like, it, say if I needed a wheelchair to bring them in or anything, would that be possible? Or if not, would they have to walk pretty far to get to the ceremony? Great question. So um, if they are being driven to the, to the Malibu campus, then my recommendation is that they are both dropped off at the entrance to Alumni Park to cut down on distance having to travel. We do have a wheelchair on the Alumni Park area that can be used to take them one at a time from the entrance to the ADA seating. And again, we can, reverse this all back to get them back to their car. Um, if they are driving themselves, they will then pull into the Firestone Fieldhouse parking lot. They'll let the public safety officer at the entrance know that they need assistance in getting to the ceremony site. We have um, a golf cart that will take them from the parking lot over to the entrance of Alumni Park. And then that wheelchair again can be used from the entrance to the ADA seating. That wheelchair is located in our information booth. So if there is someone um, that can assist them and go to the information booth, which is very close to the entrance of Alumni Park, um, and let them know that they just need uh, to utilize that wheelchair in order to go to guest seating. But I would say from the entrance to ADA seating is less than, oh, I'd say, 40 feet away. So it isn't a large distance, um, but it is grass. So it's not concrete or flat. Um, so there is that to consider, um, but we do have people at the info booth that can assist them in getting from the entrance to parking and back and forth. Thank you. And um, yeah. also, I just have one more question. Um, is the ADA seating is separate from like the regular family seating as well. So the way that is set up is our front, I would say five rows have spaces for wheelchairs and or scooters, and then a seat for guest seating. Um, and then again, a space for another wheelchair or scooter and then a, a handler or a guest. Um, and that those five rows are reserved for those guests. And then starting row six and back, it is open guest seating. Your family does not have to sit in ADA. They can sit towards the, in the guest seating. Um, the only restrictions with ADA is that we can't have the full family sit together, that it's only for those um, that have that necessity. Um, so if they would like to sit further back so that they don't have that much space that they have to travel when they enter, um, that's available to them as well. But again, it would just be the two of them plus uh, 
a guest. So four seats together in ADA seating. If you have any others, then they would need to sit in the regular guest seating starting in row six. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're so welcome. Julia, guest. Hi, um, I will be graduating in May at the ceremony, but my degree won't post until the summer. Um, I didn't receive the link today for the Zoom. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that I'm getting all of the important emails for the ceremony. Is there a good way to put myself on a list? Sure, so Michelle Bloss's team is going through the approval process for summer grads to be entered into our commencement database. Um, so I know that they're working on that. Michelle, what is our time frame for those students? We, yeah, I can answer that. Um, so uh, we have our registration for the summer uh, students who are finishing, that would be for education or on-ground psychology. So if students are finishing um, in either of those um, education or on-ground psychology, we once uh, registration opens, we'll be able to confirm that they are going to finish their degree. And then that list will be provided to Vanessa's team to for the invitation to participate. Uh, for online psychology programs, students have to finish by the spring term for eligibility for this May ceremony. And so, Julia, my, my recommendation is to keep up with the GSCP graduation webpage. Um, okay. Any emails that anyone has been sent so far is to direct them to those web pages. Um, any dates that they've received are listed on those web pages. So, with the exception of this webinar, um, you are in the know with the same as everyone that has graduated in the fall. Um, mm -hmm. and then uh, email gscpgrad at pepperdine.edu if by those dates that Michelle said you have not received anything so that we can check on that. Um, but there are plenty of students that are sitting in the same spot as you and uh, we will make sure that you get the information needed. Okay, great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, Nina. I just had a question kind of piggybacking off of, um, I forgot the gentleman's name who had um, asked a question about his parents needing um, mm -hmm. like wheelchair accessibility. I was wondering, I know you said that there's wheelchairs available to take um, family members to and from the ceremony, but what about the reception area? And are there ADA like accessible seating in the reception area after the ceremony or how does that work? Yes, yeah, so the reception is very informal. It's um, it's a grass area. Uh, there's, no, there's no formality of it. Um, there's nothing programmatic that happens there. It really is just a gathering space to take photos. Um, if you would like to have your guests uh, to go over there, then that wheelchair is something that you can use for that, but there would be a time restriction on that and the info booth would let you know how you can check that out and when that needs to be back. Um, we want everyone to be included in everything, but I also wanna let you know that there's, not that there's nothing, that you're not missing anything if you are not in that area, but it really is mingling of grads and taking photos with um, perhaps a faculty member or a classmate. But you'll definitely wanna send a proxy over there to get the chocolate chip cookie. <laughs> okay, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, Nina. All right, Sandy, you'll be our last question. Okay, thank you for taking questions. Um, I just wanted to get a visualization. So grads arrive at one and our family arrives at like two for the ceremony at 2.30. So I'm guessing that we don't, I know my parents will be like, do we see you before the ceremony or after, you know, so we don't see them before, right? We just meet up with them after. Yes, it's best that all guests remain at the ceremony site so that we can get students uh, within, in registered with their name cards, with their cap and gowns on and within the student seating. So by all means, <clears throat> you can come together with your parents. You don't have to be separate. Everyone can be on campus at, at one o'clock when you arrive, but we will ask that they stay at the ceremony site while you go to check in. Okay, and so and then you'll be reunited after the recessional. So you'll come out of the ceremony site. Um, it will be very apparent when you're there and it's really hard uh, when you haven't walked through it to kind of know what you're walking into. 
Um, but as long as you're not the first person out of the commencement ceremony, and even then you'll be led by a staff member, but they will take you back into where the reception area is. Um, and then your parents can then track you down, find you in that area, um, or you can select to um, designate some space to meet up after the ceremony. Okay. Um, and so as, as one of the guests for this earlier mentioned, we should bring like a small purse or something if we're arriving separate from our guests. Is that correct? Yes. Something that can go and you can zip your gown over it. That way you've got your cell phone and keys, et cetera, that's, that's with you. Um, so no extra jackets or bags or things of that nature, because everything that you come with is going to have to be with you on your person as you walk through the the graduation commencement ceremony. Got it. And then one last question. I actually wanted to echo something that someone asked in the chat that I don't think has been answered yet. She said, I missed hearing about the GCA, uh, the achievement stole. How do we know when or if it's appropriate to wear one? I actually don't know that. Answer. Certainly. So by name, it's achievement stole. There are no requirements to obtain it other than you're a graduate of Pepperdine GSEP. So there's no GPA, there's no certain program. It really is a reflection of GSEP graduate um, by the sheer nature of the GSEP lettering that is on it. So if you are at this point and you are purchasing regalia, then it's safe to say that you are eligible to purchase that, wear that, and then that is something that you keep. Got it. Okay, thank Maybe you so much. Try wearing that to Starbucks and see if you can get a free muffin. I don't that know. That would do it. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Sandy. And thank you to all of you. And I look forward to seeing each of you on May 20th in Malibu. So have a great afternoon.